9.3, which is uh, surface area of cylinders. And our I can statement for today, I can find surface area of cylinders. So our key idea is surface area of a cylinder. If you take a surf, uh, cylinder apart to look at the net, you have two circular bases. Those are going to be congruent to each other. And then we have a rectangle. The length of the rectangle is going to be the same as the height of our prism. That's this part. And then our width of the rectangle, that's this part, is going to be the same as the circumference of the circle. That's because you have to go take that rectangle and wrap it all the way around the circle. So when we put those parts together, that gives us our formula for the surface area of a cylinder. Here's the formula right here. Pi r squared gives us the area of the base. And since there are two of them, they put a 2 in front of it, 2 pi r squared. And then the circumference, 2 times pi times radius, and then times height. That's our lateral surface. Sometimes they're just going to ask us for lateral surface area, which is our rectangle. And that's the second part of the formula. So let's go ahead and try this formula in this problem. So find the surface area of the cylinder, round your answer to the nearest head. So we do need to make sure when we get to the answer, if it, I have a long decimal, I need to make sure I round it to the nearest tenth. Okay, so here's our surface area formula for a cylinder. Our circles, 2 times pi times radius squared, and then our rectangle, 2 times pi times radius times height. So if I look at this picture now, it's a little hard to read the red on red. They tell me that my radius here is 4 millimeters. Sometimes they'll give you the diameter instead, so you do need to make sure that you're using the radius as you put it into the formula. So 2 times pi, we're going to use 3.14 for pi on our cylinder formulas today. So 2 times 3.14 times radius squared, so that means twice, 4 times 4. That's going to give me the area for the um, two circles. And that gives me an area of 148 hundredths. We don't round anything until we get to our final answer. Now I'm going to do my rectangle, the second part of my formula. So 2 times pi times my radius, just once this time, times 4, and then times the height, which is 3. All right, so now I have my numbers. I'm going to go ahead and multiply them. And I get 75 and 36 hundredths. All right, so my last step on this problem is to add my two answers together. When I do that, I get 175 and 84 hundredths. Now, they said to round to the nearest tenth. That's one decimal place. That's that eight. And I look at the number after it to decide whether or not it's going to stay an eight or if it's going to round up to a nine. Since the number after it is 4 or less, it's going to stay in 8, 175 and 8 tenths. If that number after it was 5 or greater, then we would be rounding it up to 0.9. So this is going to be millimeter squared. As always, area and surface area are always in square units. Okay, go ahead and pause the video and try these next two on your own. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at these next two problems, see if you solve them correctly. I'm going to go ahead and write the formula up here again. 2 times pi times radius squared. 2 times pi times radius times height. If you didn't try them yet because I didn't write the formula for you, go ahead and pause now and try them. Okay, so for my um, problem number one, I have a radius of 6 and I have a height of 9. And I'm going to take those numbers, I'm going to put them into the formula. So I'm going to start with my two circles. 2 times pi, we're using 3.14 for that, times my radius squared. So I have to write it twice. 6 times 6. That will give me um, the area of 226 and 8 hundredths. That's the surface area for the two circles. Then my next part, I'm going to do 2 times pi times my radius, which was 6, times my height, which was 9. That gives me an area of 339 
12 hundredths. Then my last step is to add those two values together. So I'm going to do 226 and 8 hundredths plus my 339 and 12 hundredths. When I do, I get 565 and 20 hundredths. But since I want nearest tenth, I'm just looking at that too. I have a zero behind it, so I really don't even need to round. 565 and 2 tenths. And that's going to be yards squared. Okay, let's take a look at our next problem. So for this one, I've got a cylinder on its side. I still can see on the circle that my radius is 3. And then the distance between the circles, that's my height, even if it's on the side. That's going to be 18. So for the first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to do my 2 times pi times radius squared. Here my radius is 3, so 3 times 3. That gives me an area of 56 and 52 hundredths. Now I'm going to do my um, lateral surface area, my rectangle. So 2 times 3.14 times 3 times 18. That gives me an area of 113 and 4 hundredths. Then my last step, I need to add those two numbers together. So I have 56 and 52 hundredths plus 113 and 4 hundredths. When I do that, I get 169 and 56 hundredths. I do need to round that to the nearest tenth. So I look at the 5, I see there's a 6 behind it. So that means I need to round up. So I'm doing 169.6, and then I need to do centimeters squared. All right, so for this one, how much paper is used for the label on the can of peas? If we take a look at the picture here, the label doesn't cover the bases. There's no label on the circle. It's just the rectangle part. So what they're asking us for here is the lateral surface area. That's just the second part of our formula. That's the rectangle, 2 times pi times radius times height. So I'm going to just put in my numbers and multiply. 2 times 3.14 times my radius, which is 1, and times my height, which is 2. And that gives me an area of 12 and 56 hundredths. They did not tell me to round on this one, so I'm going to leave my decimal as it is. 12 and 56 hundredths inches squared. For my next problem, it is building on the last problem. So it says you earn one cent for recycling the can in example two. That was the can of peas. How much can you expect to earn for recycling the tomato can? Assume that the recycle value is proportional to the surface area. That word proportional is a hint to mean that I'm going to need to use a proportion for part of this problem. So I'm going to start with my can of peas. I've already done the rectangle part of my formula. I only need to do um, the circle part of my formula. And I'll go ahead and rewrite that whole formula off to the side here for anybody that needs to see it. 2 times pi times radius squared plus 2 times pi times radius times height. Okay, so on my can, my radius for the last one was 1. So I'm going to do 2 times 3.14 times radius squared, 1 plus 1. Um, I'm sorry, not one plus one, one times one. So that gives me six and twenty-eight hundredths. I already calculated the rectangle part on my last problem, so I'm not going to calculate it again. I certainly could. But since I already know that part, I don't need to um, calculate that part again. All I need to do is add those two values together. And when I do that, I get 18 and 84 hundredths, um, and that was inches squared. That's for the can of peas. In fact, because it is important, we're going to have to come back to that answer in a minute. So now I'm going to do the tomatoes, which is the can that's in this picture on the slide. Okay. 
Okay, so looking at the can of tomatoes, it looks like two is my radius, five and a half inches is my height. So I'll start with my circles. So that's going to be two times 3.14 times radius squared, so times two times two. And when I multiply that out, that gives me 25 and 12 hundredths. Now I need to do the rectangle part. So I'm going to do 2 times pi times um, my radius, which is 2, times my height, which is 5 and a half. Okay, and that gives me a surface area of 69 and 8 hundredths. So then my last step for the can of tomatoes is to add those two together. And when I do that, I get 94 and 2 tenths. And that's also going to be inches squared. Okay. I now have all the information I need to set up in my s and solve my proportion for um, the recycle value. So it tells me that the can in example two is one cent. I'm going to go ahead and just write that over here because I'm going to need the slide up to get some more space and we might not be able to see that information anymore. So one cent was for my surface area of 18 and 84 hundredths. Okay, so now I have a little more space here. Okay, so I can see um, the numbers I need and I've got space to write my proportion. So here's my proportion. I'm going to go ahead and put money on the top. And I'm going to start with my can of peas. So one cent was for my can of peas. And my can of peas had a surface area of 18 and 84 hundredths. I don't know how much money for the can of tomatoes. So I'm going to write X on the top since that's going to be my amount of money. I don't know. And then I do know the surface area for the tomatoes. I'm going to put that down at the bottom, 94 and 2 hundredths. Um, I don't see an easy multiplication side to side. You certainly could divide, um, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use cross products to solve this. So I'm going to do 18 and 84 hundredths times X, and that gives me 18 and 84 hundredths X. And then I'm going to do 1 hundredth times um, 94.2, and that's going to give me 942,000. And then my last step here is to take each number and divide by 18 and 84 hundredths. That's because um, I'm multiplying that number with x, and division is the inverse of multiplication. So when I divide that out, I get 5 cents. Don't forget to put the label in your answer. 5 cents is going to be the recycle value for our can of tomatoes. All right, so um, last one here. In example three, the height of the can of peas is doubled. Does the amount of paper used in the label double? And does the recycle value double? Go ahead and pause for a minute and try these two problems. Okay, so it said the height of peas, which we looked at both in example two and example three. The height of that can of peas is doubled, so now that means our height is going to be 4, but our radius is going to stay the same. So does the amount of paper used in the label double? Um, yes. If we actually calculate it out, 2 times pi times 1, that was our radius, times 4. I'll write the radius over here. Radius was 1. Um, when we multiply that, we get 25 and 12 hundredths. And our old surface area, 12 and 56 hundredths, times 2, gives us that value. So, yes, it does. You could explain it in words. I'm going to explain it with the math. Um, does the recycle value double? Now I could can um, calculate the whole thing. I don't actually need to, though. Um, no. The um, circles don't double, just the rectangles. In order for um, all of the recycle value to double, 
everything you need to double here. And this was just the height being doubled. The rectangle is bigger, but the circles stay the same.